Ataxia is a disorder where a person has imbalance and incoordination and that can affect the speech and the limbs and walking. And a common example everybody knows is um, alcohol toxicity. So if somebody's drunk, the balance center of the brain is impaired and that's exactly how the person behaves. So autoimmune cerebellar ataxia is basically where you have an autoimmune disease causing the same problems, but obviously it doesn't go away. It's something that persists and is progressive. Um, so what is autoimmune disease? Well, that's uh, where your immune system is doing things that it shouldn't do, which is essentially attacking your own body. Um, the immune system is there to fight off infection and fight off cancer. But in some circumstances, the immune system starts to attack a person's own body. A common example that many people know of is rheumatoid arthritis, where you have the immune system attacking the joints. And in this situation that I'm describing, we're dealing with patients who have uh, an autoimmune disease affecting the brain, and in particular, the balance center of the brain, known as the, the cerebellum. So we call it autoimmune cerebellar ataxia for that reason. We can now, nowadays test the serum and the spinal fluid for uh, these diagnostic clues. Uh, so antibodies are a, a part of the immune system that often are actually a part of the immune attack. Um, so that these uh, protein molecules um, that we can also use for making the diagnosis. We know they cause the disease, but also they can be the clue to the diagnosis if you can find them in a lab. Um, but uh, other clues can be that people just present with very rapidly progressive problems that evolve over days to weeks, which is a bit different to some of the other ataxias or balance disorders that we see in the clinics where people sort of insidiously progress over years and very often that's a genetic disease. Historically, we've thought of autoimmune cerebellar ataxia as, not, as being sort of a hopeless disease that you know we just can't treat these patients. And that's based on one particular disease that occurs almost exclusively in women who have breast cancer or have ovarian cancer and who get this rapidly progressive problem with balance and coordination to the point where they're either wheelchair bound or bed bound within weeks. Um, and I've treated many of these patients myself and sometimes we can get things to stabilize with treatment, either treating the cancer or uh, trying to treat the autoimmune part of it, um, but very often the results are disappointing. So we decided we would look at autoimmune cerebellar ataxia generally. Uh, this was largely driven by the fact that in many other diseases that have been described in recent years where we find an antibody um, and where the person has this ataxic disorder. Um, and so what we found was is that in, in many instances, patients can actually improve if we suppress the immune system for a period of time. Um, another, I suppose, major finding was is that patients who have what we call paraneoplastic disorders tend to do worse. So what does paraneoplastic mean? That means that the immune system is actually trying to get rid of a cancer that's present. Uh, not in the brain, not in the nervous system, but in the body generally. The immune system is doing a very good job often of keeping that cancer under control. But unfortunately, the immune system gets so activated and so revved up that it actually attacks the person's nervous system and they develop these balance problems. So we found that those patients often didn't do as well as the ones where they had an autoimmune disease where we didn't know the cause. We're beginning to recognize that these disorders are m more common and they take up a s substantial proportion of what would have been diseases of unknown cause in the past. Um, so we can differentiate these out from genetic diseases for which there are no treatments. Um, the autoimmune component is important because this indicates that potentially the person has a treatable disease, may also indicate that they have an underlying cancer that needs to be looked for. So what I would always suggest to doctors is if you have a patient who is a rapidly progressive neurological problem out of the blue, it's not obviously a stroke, and it's not obviously a brain tumor or something like that, that's autoimmune, should be right, very, very high up on the list.